time, time, love, joy, joy, I need space, love, I need me. Hey my awesome rebels, it's your girl Rocky here and today's video is going to be how to get over a breakup. So first off, I want to kind of just put this out there. Yes, I was in a relationship for about a year and a month or something like that and it came to an end. I don't know the exact date but sometime around like the very 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 beginning of December and I think I'm in a better place to you know talk more about it. I don't want to explain the breakup because I think that's personal and I mean I'm like my friend was telling me this he's like Raquel you're too honest and I am and I mean I don't mind explaining it like I, I I have no problem telling you guys it's just more for him because I'm an open person but he's not and I think it's just out of respect to not say anything but of course you have to deal with the breakups although I don't want to talk about how we broke up I just do want to mention that our breakup was in the end mutual I'm in a better place and I hope he's in a better place I honestly and truly think it was for the best so and I just want to do a video of how to get over a breakup because I know a lot of people are going through this and I know some people are going through this or some people are going through a stressful time and you will not have to go through a breakup to in order to do these steps you could have lost a friend you could have lost a pet you could have lost a family member you could have lost anything or lost something or you know just be in the dumps and you can just apply these things to it but because this was my situation that's why I'm calling it how to get over a breakup now let's get into this I'm so gangsta in my videos okay so the first thing I want to talk about is a breakup is like extremely hard and I mean, depending how close you were with the person, it doesn't even matter about the time. It just matters how close you were to that person. Like, you spent a lot of effort and, and time, and you just were committed. You were committed to that one person. So, of course, your feelings are going to be like, oh my god, someone just stabbed me in the friggin' heart. Like, what happened? So, in your breakup, the first few nights are going to be the hardest. And I mean the hardest. I can tell you for a fact, as soon as this situation occurred I called up my best friend and I was crying dramatically on the phone to him like being like oh my god like what do I do with my life what do I do with myself like I was just crying just like trying to cope with how I'm feeling and it was so like I look back and him and I kind of like laugh at it because I was so dramatic and you know the first few nights are the hardest you're gonna be dramatic as hell and you know what you deserve it you deserve to be dramatic you deserve to have your feelings get heard and basically I'm saying for you to talk to someone confide in someone who you trust and just someone who will listen and just be there for you and not trying to figure out what's the scoop and what's this and what's that like no legitimately like you can tell someone who is actually trying to be your friend and who is there for you through thick and thin and someone who isn't judgmental and who isn't biased and who understands you in every way possible so what you guys want to do is you want to get all your crying out and legitimately cry I don't care if you don't look cute when you cry like cry cry it all out you're probably gonna have a few nights maybe even a week maybe even a month I don't know how long it takes for each individual to get over a breakup but you cry it out you deserve it you need to get it out you need to get out of your system and that's okay so tissues are your best friend okay tissues are like I remember I had a pile and I was living in tissues and they just pile up I am such a crybaby I'm so dramatic I am you know all of it so for me I was crying hardcore like a week maybe I didn't want to get out of bed I barely got out of bed like it was just me crying some might say that's not healthy and I can agree to some extent but you know I think it's also a form of reflection and it's a form of grief and I think that's healthy and I think that's okay the next thing you might not want to do but <laughs> and I'm probably gonna get hate people going and be like why are you telling people to do this this isn't healthy this isn't right but it's how to get over a breakup it's not how to be healthy so 
here you go. Raid your fridge, okay? Find all that junk food and snacks and craps and, you know, ice cream? That's your best friend, okay? You want to eat that tub, you eat that tub, okay? Because you can eat your feelings and, I mean, it might not solve the problem, but it'll solve it temporarily. And let me... The, <laughs> let me go there. <laughs> you're hurt. You feel like you're dying. That's kind of how a breakup feels like. At least to me, I'm a very sensitive and emotional person. I get attached to the extreme. So, I mean, if it hurts that much and... You know, eating my feelings makes me happy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make myself happy in that temporary time to just make myself happy. Because I think anything to make me happier than what I was is better. Take it how you will, but that's how it is. So I would raid my fridge. I remember I ate, I went to the dollar store and I remember I bought like two Kit Kat Chunkies and a Crunchy Bar. Like, Canadians, like, I feel like Canadians will only know what Crunchy Bar is. But, like, I, I went ham that night. And I just basically, like, ate all my junk, like, ate all my feelings, and I was like, this is a good temporary fix. And you know what? I was a little bit happy, so I think that's better than being really, really, really in a darker place. The next thing that you guys should do, and something that I think would be extremely beneficial for you guys if you are going through something, is to get a blank journal. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna not only talk about what happened and the situation and how you feel and everything that you're feeling towards this, not only the good times, the bad times, whatever, but keep writing and it's called like it's called creative writing or free writing or whatever you want to call it but keep writing don't stop after your point is made is what i'm trying to say so any thought that comes to your head write it down it doesn't matter if it isn't even towards the breakup or not because i know a lot of people who say journaling is therapeutic and it, and it is 100 percent. but to do free writing I think is a little more therapeutic because you're understanding your steps and you're understanding the your reflection of yourself and what you're going through and what you're doing. Honestly, if there was anything that helped me the most, I would say it was that. So I suggest doing that. I realized how much I needed to self-reflect and I realized kind of how important it was. My next suggestion is have a breakup playlist and I know how this could get mixed vibes. Like people are going to be like, no, you should put on happy music because your end goal is to be happy. But I feel like there's a time to, you know, think about the situation and to grieve and, you know, to cry. That's a reason for breakup songs and sad songs because they want you to feel that emotion and they want you to have strong feelings for it and you know every now and then maybe you want to throw on a happy song but chances are you probably don't you just want to hear those songs about like love dying i for sure have a like breakup playlist it makes you cry more and it makes you emotional and it makes you reflect more i have a heartbreak list. Brandy, have you ever? Avril Lavigne, what the hell? I hate everything about you by Three Days Grace. Jojo, leave. Get out. Catherine McPhee, over it. Kelly Clarkson, since you've been gone. Liana Lewis, better in time. Miley Cyrus, drive. Like there's so many songs and there's so many things that bring your emotions up front and I feel like it's good to just hear yourself out. My next suggestion is do something that's going to better yourself. Like, for example, some people, when they go through a bad situation, they dye their hair a different color or they start a new hobby. Like, something that will change yourself and, like, uplift yourself. This is what I did and what I'm doing. And I'm kind of, like, off and on, but I assure you my end goal is to be, like, good on my diet. But... After my breakup, I was like, no, I want to be on my diet. Like, I want to better myself. And I think that's a good mindset to have just to make the whole breakup like a better experience. Just do something for yourself because at the end of the day, you realize that you're not in that relationship anymore and you're by yourself. And what better way to do something than do something for yourself? Little things that can make you happy, they kind of add up. The other thing is 
distract yourself. And this could be done many different ways, either watching movies or playing video games or whatever it is that you want to do. But I mean fully distract yourself. For me, it's like I need to be around people, I need to be around friends, and I'm going to be honest, I don't have that many friends. I only have a few close friends. So for me, I wasn't even around them when I was going through this and I wanted to go out with them to hang out with them to just distract your mind because you're out in public you you're designed to have fun with your friends and that's what you need and that's what you should be doing I think not only distract yourself and you know things you could do alone but distract yourself by hanging out with friends and family and like your pets and like things that make you happy and the next thing that I want to tell you guys is this is the thing that bugs me about breakups. I get it. If it's a crappy breakup, like I understand 100% if you don't want anything to do with that person. But if it is just like a breakup, I don't understand why it's so dramatic. Like I can't talk to that person anymore. You obviously cared enough about them at one point in your life or you loved that person at one point in your life. So why would you want to shut that out? Like. Mm. And maybe you can't deal with it now, but eventually I think you guys should have the mindset of, you know, becoming friends with your exes or becoming friends with, you know, just having a mature, and when I say friends, I don't mean like, oh my god, best friend, like, where are you? No, I mean, just be civil, just be decent human beings. Every now and then, him and I text each other and we say, hey, how's it going? How's life? Sometimes he confides in me and he tells me how crap his day was. And you know what? I respect that and I love that so much because it's like, I cared at one point and he cared at one point and we still care. And it's like, why am I gonna drop you off like you're garbage, like I'm done, like you're trash, like no, I'm not talking to you no more. That is not how it works and I think to become a mature person, you need to understand how to be friends. Why wouldn't you want to be if that person was so important at that time to you? For me, it just mind boggles me that automatically people assume that you can't be friends with someone after the breakup and I feel like that is just immature like again if they cheated on you or if they did you wrong or if they were nasty about the breakup like i understand i understand completely if you want to be friends with them or mesh with them but i still think you need to be civil that's one thing i definitely can respect about him we got nothing but respect and i think that out of everything i think that just shows how good of a person he is internally i think that says a lot about someone even friends who i've lost like best friends who i've lost even other relationships that i've lost like anyone in my life they know that they can always come to me because it's like i cared about you so why wouldn't i always care about you we're all humans we're all people we all go through stuff and at the end of the day hey maybe you and i don't click well but that doesn't mean i'm just gonna drop you off like you're nothing you mean something to me so that's just kind of how my brain works and I think you guys should be open-minded to that concept not think of a breakup as a necessarily a bad thing but think of it as something that can be good and that you can learn from and that you know you can grow from and you can mature from I just want to point out that I am NOT a relationship expert I am NOT Cupid I am NOT you know the relationship fairy I am not the breakup fairy I am not a professional in any sort of way with wings or anything like that like no but I'm just telling you from my point of view this is all things that I did that I personally think would help a lot of people out and that's basically why I'm coming to you with this video and no way am I trying to say this is what you should do because probably the, probably some of the stuff I said you probably shouldn't do but <laughs> But, I mean, at the end of the day, this is how I dealt with it. Maybe someone similar to me that they they can use these things towards themselves and they can get through it in a more positive way. But anyways, that is my video for you guys and I hope you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you guys could like and subscribe for more content. Me, comment down below what's your best breakup tip. And I made a Snapchat because I'm cool. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, peace out. Cause if you like the way you look that much, oh baby, you should go and love yourself. And if you think that I'm still holding on to something, you should go and love yourself.